got a, quite a few things to cover here uh, in this section, but as far as the, one of the questions we've been asked in the past back few weeks has been, well, we've got such a great export pace going on right now for these grains. Does that mean it's, it's going to last all the way through the rest of the year? And that's one of the questions that we've always asked. And in fact, every few years we get the same type of type of uh, uh, question here. As far as where we're sitting at right now, we can see that as far as new crop corn bookings, this is in the blue bars right here for each year. Uh, we're booking about 13 percent, uh, actually 24 percent higher than last year at this time for corn. However, one thing we want to point out is these really aren't extreme levels for corn. You can tell these past few years we've been as much as 500 million bushels at this point. So this is not a large amount of corn already booked. It's just that the last couple weeks have been exciting here. One thing I kind of pointed out is I highlighted, well, what was the total marketing year sales that happened after that? And all these big years, I went ahead and made them uh, into these red bars right here. As far as this idea here, do, does large pre-harvest bookings mean we've got large exports coming through the rest of the year here? Uh, 94 and uh, 95, actually 94 as far as this one. Uh, here's that 95 right here. 95 actually did mean some big numbers. 96, some big pre-harvest sales but they didn't pan out to be dramatically large numbers. So right now we're at what? We're at, uh, out of these two, we've got only one kind of worked. We can point out just a few years ago we had these similar two years as far as big sales at this time of year. In fact, one was big, one was actually not too big. So out of the four years we found, only two of them have a sound relationship as far as being dramatically large marketing year sales. So for corn, big harvest sales does not always mean they're going to last the rest of the year. So just kind of keep that in mind here. Uh, as far as the other issue playing in corn right now, obviously this uh, this issue right now with crop conditions and, and also with uh, yields, just want to point out in the last five years, USDA has made some significant changes to yield, a minimum of 2.4 bushels an acre and up to 4 bushels an acre. So keep in mind, we are going to see some changes on this report, and that's going to detail this out to, to show exactly what type of numbers we can expect here. Uh, right now, USDA is 165. That was last last month, or this uh, actually just about three weeks ago. Right now, as of last week's crop condition report, our yield model says 165.1. We will see a reduction in numbers here today, uh, maybe one or two percent decline, and that probably will bring our model under this 165 level, probably something like a 164.7 or something like that. It's not going to be dramatically change things. One thing I, I saw here today was uh, Newswire's uh, quoted a guy saying 162 is what his estimate was for current yields. And he had a sub 1 billion bushel number. What I went ahead and did, and, uh, did here was kind of look at this and broke it down. 162 is what he's plugging in right now. And that's a 251 million bushel drop. He's taken that entire drop for, from production off of USDA's number and also including a little bit on exports. We have to keep in mind here that if you, in, if you drop production, you're also going to drop slightly on demand end. Obviously, ex, obviously uh, exports and ethanol are not going to be changing too much, but feed use will be a little bit here, and also uh, some of the other industrials as well will take a hit. So here's the point I, I want to try and make. When you guys hear these guys shooting out yield numbers and then giving an ending stock number, what this means, you got to look at their breakdown on the demand side. Are they taking a drop in demand? Or is it groups like I, I'm going to not going to mention any groups specifically here, but it's very common for people to say, we're going to drop production by 250 million, therefore we're taking 250 off, at, off of any stocks. That's not correct and it's not right. So just the main point I want to keep in mind is if we do like a, if we do see a drop down to 162 like these guys, by, well, my, by my estimate right now, you're sitting still sitting right above that one billion mark. It's not, uh, you know, that's still a tight number. Anything one billion and below is our magic number of getting that really exciting market here. So bottom line is even if we do drop to 162, we can squeak by the 1.1 carryover. I don't think it's going to happen, but at least for this point, uh, it's obvious we're going to drop down numbers. We're going to drop our yield from 165 probably to 164-ish this afternoon. And we are going to see some numbers down below this 1.3 from USDA down to a 1.2 level. But one thing I want to point out is so far I don't see us dropping below that magic 1 billion bushel mark that gets people excited. So it's going to keep that in mind here. Uh, we're going to have our, our uh, yield survey is actually completed. We're going to have the numbers hopefully worked up by Wednesday or so that we release to the media on Friday. So 
as of this week, this will be a major turning point for us and actually getting some solid numbers to look at here. Uh, real briefly, going through the export side here for soybeans, answering that same question, we've got some big export sales here. This is a record pre-harvest bookings for soybean sales. This is up 13% uh, higher than last year. So uh, as far as other years that were considered big at that time, you've got one right here, and this is uh, 97. And actually, the numbers for the final marketing year didn't turn out to be that large compared to the other compared to the next year. Here's one here I see for 2003. We had dramatically large sales, and look at this. The number is actually down compared to the last couple of years. So for, we're 0 for 2 right now in this argument here. Uh, the last two years, the other previous ones, these were big sales. So big pre-harvest sales and also big numbers as far as the final market year. So the story for beans, two out of the four years, same story as corn. So it's not a dramatic relationship that's going to stay with us here. So large pre-harvest bookings does not always mean we're going to have dramatically large uh, numbers as far as exports. Briefly, as far as our, uh, our yield numbers, right now we are using a drop down to 43.3. These are Allendale's official numbers right now here. And this is what we had from last week using that uh, crop, uh, crop progress model here. At this point, we see, yeah, things probably will be trimmed down a little bit here. We have a, a little bit of a different number as far as, uh, as, far as production. Uh, then we USDA hands, and we do see a slight drop. Still, 328 million bushels is burdensome levels as far as soybeans. So this is also one reason why we're seeing days like today. Yeah, corn may stick up, but beans are starting to fail. Bottom line is the market's realizing that you've got to have a drop down to, I think, it's about 41 bushels, so a full three bushel drop, almost 10%, before you even get anywhere near average levels for ending stocks. So you've got to have a drop on yield down to 41 to even think about getting bullish long-term beans. That's why we're seeing the stuff like last few days. Corn may stay strong, but beans are failing here by the, by the close. Over on the wheat side, just answer this quick question real quick. Of course, we've already harvested the crop, but so far uh, since the marketing year started through August 19th, which is the latest numbers we have, we're sitting right here with a pre-booking number up about 57% uh, higher. Dramatically large pre-bookings. I want to point out as far as the last few years, we've got four, one, or actually five uh, of these years here. We've got kind of a big year, so that worked. As far as this other one right here, similar, that worked here. Next year, drop. So two, of the, two out of the first three years we found did work. This one here, big numbers, and we did have some problems just like uh, other world areas, just like what's going on this year. So right now we've got three or four years worked, and this one right here, Big, big pre-harvest, but actually a weak number as far as the final exports. So three out of the five years work for, for wheat. So a little better, but it's not anything that's going to stick to actually talk about. Uh, just briefly here as far as the numbers, you know what? We are going to pop exports a little bit here. We've got the USDA going from 1.2. We got them at one two and a half as far as billion bushel ending stocks or billion bushel exports. That is going to drop these numbers as far as ending stocks. Still burdensome for U.S. and still larger than average for the world. Not changing that picture here. I uh, just want to point out one thing I did see, which is kind of sticking with me here. So we've got dry conditions this week. They took out the rains that were scheduled for Labor Day. You, the 6 to 10 day for the first week of September does show, you know what, things are going to go back to normal. I did see that the government still has a forecast out for the month of September, the entire month, and they still do have above normal temps here for the eastern Corn Belt and Missouri as well. Uh, Precept-wise, they've got no no change here as far as preset, nothing abnormal here. The so bottom line right here, I guess the message we're pointing out is big exports are exciting. It's nice to see for right now. Uh, we are going to up our export numbers a little bit here compared to what USDA has. Uh, however, it's not something that's, that's sticking like glue to the wall here. We can't say just because we have big exports now doesn't mean that they're going to stay with all those orders here. Uh, as far as yield-wise, like I said, we're going to trim numbers here for corn uh, on this afternoon's uh, crop progress report, but at least for this point, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to make any major changes enough to say we need to be in an outright straight bullish market here yet. Uh, as far as our yield numbers, we're going to come out with a final one at the end of this week and make a full price outlook from there as far as the corn goes here. 